Welcome to the Next Generation Dog Podcast, hosted by Melinda Benbow of Urban Uplander Pet Care and Bethany Carter of Sanguine Moon Kennels. Join Melinda and Bethany as they discuss dog breeds, sports, training, health, and much more with special guests. Tune in weekly for all things dedicated to dogs. Well, thank you all for tuning again tuning in again to our next episode. Uh, as we mentioned in our last episode, where we talked more about Bethany's kennel, Sanguine Moon, she has had her very first litter after all that hard work of ethically taking care of all the genetic te- health testing, proving and sports and, and everything else. Um, she did it. She went through conception with an awesome stud and now they have puppies on the ground. So I think we wanted to take a moment to kind of recap that event. Uh, Fortunately, it was my first experience and Bethany was nice enough to let me kind of peek in and ask 101 questions through this whole process. So um, we want to just kind of recap and take you all through it and talk about her first experience with her own litter and my first experience with with seeing this at all. So uh, Bethany, tell us about Stitch It and, and everything that went down. How did you know it was time? Yeah, well, I want to start off, Melinda, by saying thank you so much for being there, for helping document, for putting hands on puppies, on mom, on being a gopher for everything that you did. I think it was super important. And I'm so glad that I could share that opportunity with you as I have been graciously given. Um, I think it's so very important to sit with someone else who is experienced and whelp their litters and see kind of some errors, some like the real life journey. Um, Sometimes not all the puppies make it. In our case so far, oh, seven days later, all of our puppies are thriving and well. Um, I think but I'm this just was so a excited. perfect example of a first time. I mean, I, again, you know a lot more than I do, but I think that as far as easy, healthy, safe whelpings go, I think this was a picture perfect scenario. Yes. Um, so I think our hard work started a couple weeks prior when we set up the whelping box, when we got mom introduced to it. Um, I started feeding her in the whelping box and just showing her really pleasant trees in the whelping box. Um, we really focused on making sure the other dogs understood and respected the boundaries of the room that we're using for the whelping area. Um, and make sure that our other home pets um, knew not to cross that barrier because it would upset mom. And so uh, we started <laughs> there. a video the other day of Stitch, like, <laughs> at the wall, box, looking them. at the door, like, you guys don't come in. And, and they do respect that boundary. It's amazing just to see them all at the door, like, it's okay, mama, we're not coming in at all. Yes. Um, they are very curious, but mom says not right now. So we're listening to mom and letting her take that lead. And when she's ready for um, those outside dogs to come and visit. But right now, they're still very new for her. Um, so let's get into this. Uh, yeah. So we got that welding box set up and we really started associating good things with it. Um, and I started taking her temperature twice a day, um, about a week to two weeks before, uh, I anticipated her to whelp, which again, with progesterone is going to be 63 days from ovulation. So you can either do the luteinizing hormone test, or you can kind of guess with a progesterone, um, test there to, to guess when the ovulation is, and then 63 days from there. So again, it would have been December 1st, but they came a little early on November 30th. Uh, However, um, Melinda, you and I on the, I'm sorry, they were the 29th. Yeah, the 29th. Yep. You cut out for a moment. I don't think we heard the date yet on the 29th. Okay. Yep. So on the 29th, uh, they were born, but on the 28th, that Monday prior, um, I was keeping you in touch and like, hey, they're going to have... We had this temperature drop. It went um, from 101 Actually, you, you down to 90. Me Did to I say that? And I literally was at the grocery Thanks. store and audibly screamed in the aisle. Like <laughs> I was so excited. I was throwing everything in my cart. Like I got to get out of here. It's gonna be time soon. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, so typically that temperature drop indicates that within the next 24 hours, whelping is likely to ensue. Um, and then that did not, that, that happened for us. Um, so we did stay up most of the night going back and forth. And I'm like, it's not going to happen tonight. Her temperature kind of, kind of started to go back up. Um, but it's definitely coming. So uh, I but was that very didn't stop us from staying up all night, all night long. <laughs> of excitement! I wasn't even at your house, and I'm telling you, I did everything to keep myself just awake because I'm such a heavy sleeper, and I was so scared that you were going to text or call, and I was going to sleep through it. So I got no sleep, and I'm sure you didn't either because you had to watch mm. Mama. Yes, I was afraid for that night birth, um, but she kept us up all night just to have babies during the day which I'm not mad about either. <laughs> um, but I think that that also kind of worked out very well where you were visiting close by. And um, it was perfect. It was. Um, I think I called you and said, you know, she's starting to show signs of second stage labor. She started to have some contractions showing that she was really uncomfortable, um, that she was nesting a lot and she just wasn't able to find kind of peace in herself. You know, uh, I didn't see those texts. I just showed up. I, yes. <laughs> I was already out there at Bonnie's and I said, you know what? I'm just going to go over because I was also cramping. Um, my tummy was saying, uh, lady, lady stuff is going to happen soon. Um, so as soon as I got to your house, I was in pain. And I'm telling you, um, I feel like she instantly started getting restless as soon as I got there. And it, it just seemed like, oh, something's going to happen soon. Yes. Um, and so I think it was within 30 minutes. I could see that Stitch was kind of wanting to hunch. Her tail was curling as if she was pushing. Um, and I could see that she was wanting to go out to the bathroom a lot. And so recognizing that she was a new mom, that um, that sensation as a mother myself often feels like you have to go to the bathroom um, when yeah. in fact it's a baby. So uh I decided to kind of bring her out of the whelping area, see if that would kind of change, um, just changing her environment. And I think that's when she was sitting on the floor and she kind of did that push and we saw some red and I said, okay, so the whelping box. Um, and yeah. so she kind of continued to push, but wasn't comfortable. So I knew that we had to have this first one outside for her to, to let go and release. You could really tell in her, like, you could just see her wheel spinning of, I, I have to, I feel like I have to potty, you know, I need to be outside, you know. It seemed, I, especially for her first litter, I think in her mind, it seems so unnatural to try to push inside when she's worked so hard to continue to go potty outside for all these outside. years now. You know, it yes. just seemed like you could see that, that those bodily signals um, just not being understood quite yet. Yes. So we grabbed a towel. We grabbed a suction. And I grabbed my GoPro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> out we went. Um, and so we went into the front yard where it was easier to go back and forth from the whelping box. Um, and surely she started to push. Um, and it was also very ironic that uh, my breeder also called instantly as if she knew. At the same time. At the she same just exact knew. time. She just knew. I was telling Ryan to call her, and she was and, already Yeah, the calling. phone just started ringing as soon as you said it. I literally was so confused for a moment. I'm like, wait, did he call her that fast when she's just calling? I'm like, no, he's still dialing her number. Yes, and she was calling me. It's she, Amy, has magic. Uh, so <laughs> Amy was um, giving some advice and kind of input um, and just really excited for us because these are like her little grand puppies you know now her puppies are, are having puppies and as you uh, know your first time you know and she's you know so motherly you know i think she really just wants everyone to do well in this situation i mean she even even her mel how are you doing and i'm just in the back <laughs> I'm like, uh. yes she was oh. the mother matriarch um just kind of making sure everything was going smoothly uh and ditch did she pushed that first baby out as if she was having a bowel movement um but in fact she was having a baby and it was a little painful for her she didn't know what was going on she kind of cried a little bit and uh, yeah she was 
a bit confused, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it was outside and I'm telling you, I think it was neat seeing the first one come out outside because in the sunlight and, you know, broad daylight, it was so interesting to see the, you know, the amniotic sac and this baby in it. And I mean, Stitch was looking, I, I had her head, you know, trying to keep her calm and um, we were both just watching it come out like, oh, that's not a normal poo, you know, <laughs> <Just> <laughs> yeah. definitely, like I, I didn't expect that, you know, so I think, I think, you know, the normal pain of, uh, of birth, you know, nothing that was like, uh, you know, any kind of dystocia or anything like that. But, uh, and then mixed with that confusion of, you know, I know this is natural, but this is, you know, very new to my body. Yes. Um, and so she, she's, I think she started to get the hang of it though, as each puppy went. Um, so we got Absolutely. that first puppy inside, we suctioned and it was really heaven sent um, how it worked out with weather because typically this time of year, we would definitely anticipate a lot of colder weather, but I think we had an almost 60 degree day that day. Um, yeah. So it wasn't too bad uh, for the weather. So we brought that puppy inside. We let Stitch lick and clean and get all those mothering instincts. Um, in she was in so excited. She was. Oh my gosh. She was like, was that came out of me? Like, <laughs> like I did this? Yeah. It was very awesome to see. She, she was a very passionate um, and very much an empowered mother, I think, at this point. She is ready to lick and clean her baby. She keeps them very white and pearly. Yes, Stitch will keep the cleanest babies ever, we realize that day. But, you know, again, uh, from a trainer's standpoint, um, watching just behavior through the whole thing, um, it was very interesting to just watch her putting these dots together of, you know, oh, that, that's a baby. Oh, more babies, you know, and just, just even in the almost nine hours of whelping, just seeing her transform from this confused, you know, what is happening to, oh, I'm a mom. <laughs> I'm a mom. I got work to do now. Yeah, it was um, very exciting. So I think the first puppy came at 220 and the last puppy was at 1038 p.m. Um, so it was a very quick delivery for 11 puppies. Um, and I think she really started to get the hang of it. She started to just push those babies out real quick. Um, and she was excited to nurse. She wanted to lay down. She wanted to be with her puppies. Um, she definitely did not want to leave. And I just really enjoyed seeing her mothering instincts kick in because I did not want to bottle feed 11 babies. <laughs> no, she did wonderful. And, and puppy number one, um, it came out a girl um and you know i get you can talk more about this but i mean i think we saw genetics at play already when this puppy came out yeah yeah absolutely um has very similar markings to stitch um and it is just phenomenal to see even both dogs uh, major also has a few clones in there um yeah i mean they, even that first puppy it was them. like half stitch half major you know stitch up top major yes. on on the booty uh and it's yes. really neat to see like these puppies come out already as these little blends of their parents yeah they're just a pile of genetic cells um, it's crazy it's, it's so weird. and now it's a whole puppy um, so yeah, it was very unique to see all of them. And also just like Dalmatians, uh, GSPs don't get their ticking in for several weeks. Um, and it can be up to two years before you see their final form, essentially, of what Absolutely. their coloration is going to look like. It's like with setters, you know, every time I wash my setter puppy, um, it's like he gets another couple spots real quick. <laughs> You're like, oh, where yes. did those come from? Um, but you know, again, the whelping went really well for what I would consider my first experience. You know, I don't have anything to weigh it towards, but, um, I got to be there for the first five puppies. And I mean, after that first puppy came out, it's like, you know, each one was just faster and, and I won't say faster, but easier. And you know, her timing between puppies, especially those first five was very consistent. So when I had to leave before puppy number six to go um, get departing daycare and boarding dogs home, um, I 
was so sad because, you know, she stayed pretty consistent. So I'm like, oh, I'm missing puppies, you know. Um, so I think while I was away in that two to two and a half hour time span, she had puppies six through nine. Um, and I was mm -hmm. able to come back for, um, I'm sorry, six through eight six through eight maybe and then I was able to come back for nine through eleven. Um yeah. and man, it was like the lottery these puppies coming out. Do you want to talk about um what their uh their genders are? Yeah. So um sexes, the breeders wives tale is that if you breed early you'll get girls. If you breed late you'll get boys. Um we bred early and if it is true or holds any weight we did end up having nine girls um with only two boys uh so that was an experience um which was kind of a little also unfortunate i was definitely hoping for a, a few more boys as we intend on retaining a boy in a guardian home um so that way we can add to our program um, but not have another male in the house. Uh, we have Mercury who is being rehabilitated um, that we received uh, just shy of a year ago. Um, that's a, a journey for another story. Um, <laughs> however, uh, he is our intact male in the house. And my son also has a neutered male. Um, so we have two breeding females or one breeding female, one coming up to hopefully be a breeding perspective. Um, so we didn't want to house another male and have some of those dynamic issues. Uh, so we got two boys to choose from. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, <laughs> And they're both super cute. They're both very livery and adorable. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see how they all grow and develop. Um, with standard for the breed, um, tails do get docked. And so we did that just a, a you know, right. Uh, what was, how old were they at the time? I think I did three days. Three days. So they were nice and young. And I mean, um, again, you know, I, I, you were so nervous, but you did so well on everything. I mean, you know, I think just, you know, being that they're your dogs, there's a little bit more of a, you know, you get, you get a little bit more nervous and stuff, but I yeah, thought it was so I, phenomenal to watch you in the, especially whelping, you were calm, cool, and collected. Every puppy that came out, you were just catching them and, you know, getting them cleaned off and suctioned and, and taking care of the umbilical cord and uh, making sure we had those first good sounding breaths. And so it was, it was a sight to see. It, it seemed like you've done it. I mean, cause you have, but it, it definitely showed that you're very, experienced in the whelping department um i got to watch the tail docking at three days again easy peasy um you had everything you needed to make it swift uh you did the banding technique which i think um most breeders will agree is probably the most humane and ethical um way to provide tail docking um and yeah i think it went smooth and i, I mean tails are all pretty much gone already now right yeah, we just have one little tail that is lingering on, but it is on the verge. I suspect that today it will probably fall off by the evening. Um, and I've also really found by banding, it gets that hair to grow all the way around the tail. So we don't have those naked tips anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a little bit more forgiving if you don't get it right in between the digits of the tail. Um, so the idea is to get it right in that cartilage band. Um, and so with rubber bands, you have some opportunity to um, place it, decide that maybe that's not the correct place that you want. You can cut that band and then replace it as many times as you need to. Um, where I mean, I if you make the wrong also, cut. It's yeah. Done. That's. I mean, and that also is potential spine trauma, you know, um, and a lot of other stuff that can happen. So I think that the band also just is a really minimally traumatic experience um, for these young dogs. Um, and then that also kind of starts off, you know, ENS for you, which, you know, for anyone who doesn't know ENS is early neurological stimulation where puppies do undergo particular amounts of stress to be able to be um, more tolerable, neutral dogs in the future. Um, so this is kind of just, you know, part of that, that kickoff. And um, it sounds like you guys have started ENS, right? 
Yes. So we waited 48 hours after their tail docking um, and do claw removal to start that. We don't want to add more stress to already stressed um, puppies. We Our focus is having them thrive um, and uh, be very healthy before we start this process of introducing minor stresses through the uh, early neurological stimulation. Uh, so we did start that. This uh, is our second day, um, right? Three, four, five, six, seven. No, this is our fourth day. Wow. Where did time go? Oh. Okay. <laughs> it really is going fast with these puppies. I'm like, they're going to be at home before is you it? know it. Yeah. So what did the first few days look like? Um, so we let those tails heal when they started falling off. That's when we started ENS. Um, they, most of their time was spent just nursing and sleeping and nursing and sleeping in different intervals. Now, an interesting uh, perspective is I had a lot of my vet tech friends ask, you know, when I was going to start stimulate or supplementing and what I was going to supplement with. Um, and my answer was, I'm not, uh, I'm not until oh I have what? to. Milk? Yes. They, they thought oh, it was such a large yeah. litter that she would need help um, and that puppies just wouldn't be able to thrive off of mom alone. Um, but my experience and my information told me otherwise. Um, so as long as mom has enough calories and she has enough fluid intake, um, then mom should be able to upkeep. Stitch has 10 teeth. Uh, so there would be no reason why she couldn't sustain 11 little ones. No, I mean, and even in the, you know, lack of experience and more of just the like, you know, online classes and uh, reading and stuff I've done, I think the standard is you let mama take care of her dogs unless she absolutely is not, you know, um, right. she can do it. You know, you don't intervene unless you absolutely have to intervene. Um, but, but yeah, you know, when it comes to those mild stressors, you know, I definitely say for people who aren't familiar with ENS, definitely go, um, check out our blog. There is a document on there talking more about what Purdue University has to say on the topic and some other resources, um, explaining to you guys more of what that looks like and, um, what those, how you can do it with your litters and why it's beneficial and all that good stuff. Um, hopefully in the future, we can bring you some more episodes designed, um, specifically for ENS. And, and going through what that looks like. And maybe we can get some experts on here to discuss it more with us. But um, but before we close out this episode, I know one thing we didn't mention is this foundation, Litter for You, Litter A, Litter 1, whatever people want to call it, um, you also have as the Woodstock Litter. You know, a lot of breeders pick a theme to name their pups. Um, and you guys picked Woodstock, which I think is absolutely cute and definitely is totally you. Um, so I know the other day you said you mentioned you did have names for pups. Do you want to run us through those names? And again, if you have not checked out the last episode talking more about Sanguine Moon Kennel, I highly recommend it as we talk more about the foundation bitch and why this litter is so exciting for Bethany. Um, her dog is an amazing hunter and also participates in other sports. Um, the stud dog also has a wonderful list of titles improving. So this litter is going to make um, some families some amazing hunting companions and sporting dog companions. Um, and I would almost say whatever sport you decide to do with these dogs they should be pretty natural in their abilities agreed especially if it involves swimming absolutely absolutely all right so our stud dog owner um, her father passed uh, in vietnam as a soldier um, and his friend uh, who was also a soldier in vietnam did come back but also recently passed she named both of her stud dogs after uh, her father and his best friend uh, so major is named after his friend who recently passed uh, so we decided to kind of um reach out for that that peace and love and harmony um which is what our goal always is it's our philosophy in life and we thought we could bring it here in this moment especially in this world of turmoil right now that we're in um so we're bringing back that woodstock theme uh, which was a very peaceful 
music festival. Um, so our names are kind of as follows. We have 12 of them, even though there's 11 puppies, we're still um, doing that final decision and we'll post photos along with everybody tonight. Um, so we have a, uh, everybody will name be named Sanguine Moon as first um, and then their name to follow. Uh, unless the family picks their own names. So our first name is gonna be Sanguine Moon's Snow White Lady, Misty Roses, Handsome Johnny, Rollin' Blues, Woodstock Boogie, Dark Star, Born on the Bayou, White Rabbit, Hitchhawk Railway, His Latest Flame, Little Darlin', Foxy Lady, and our pick name is gonna be Voodoo Child. I love these. Actually, number one, I love Voodoo Child because I don't know if I ever told you this, but for Jasper, um, I really wanted to name him Voodoo, but his personality just was not that of a Voodoo at all. Um, but I love these names. I love the Woodstock vibe. I love the hippie vibe. Um, you know, I think it's going to be really fun to watch these puppies grow. Um, these kennel names are awesome. So... As Bethany said, she's going to be posting um, pictures of the puppies where they're at at one week old with their names. Um, and then hopefully we can do some tracking pictures on her social media as well as the next uh, Generation Dog podcast. Uh, do keep in mind these episodes are backlogged. So, um, you know, by the time you do see these, they'll probably be a few weeks old. But the content is still there. The pictures are still there. So check them out because they are adorable puppies. Um, and if you are interested and all the puppies have not been reserved at this point, you can definitely learn more about her breeding program by going to her social media or the Next Gen Dog Pod social media and checking out her good dog link. Uh, other than that, definitely follow us on Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, not just as Next Gen Dog Pod, but as Urban Uplander Pet Care and Sanguine Moon Kennels. Um, aside from that, stay tuned for our next episode, um, and hopefully we can start talking about some training goals for this new year. Uh, again, Bethany, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Thank you, Melinda. Had fun as always. Awesome. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Next Generation Dog Podcast. Weekly episodes are released on Fridays on Spotify and YouTube. Please follow the Next Gen Dog Pod on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, and Facebook. For even more content dedicated to all things dogs, follow Urban Uplander Pet Care and Sanguine Moon Kennels on Instagram and Facebook.